And that means I have to do double work. So, hey, welcome everybody. Today is, we are in our second session dealing with accessibility. Last time, um, I talked about Ally. And Ally is a checker to make sure, you know, the content that you're providing in, in your in your course is meeting accessibility standards. And so that is a, a great tool. If you have not seen that session, go check that session out. And that will, you know, kind of bring you up to speed on that. Um, it just points things that you need to improve on. So what today's session is, we are looking specifically at Blackboard, adding content directly into Blackboard. And this is not linking out to external content necessarily. This is just really focused on the stuff that you, you put in Blackboard, like your instructions to discussions, um, you know, anything that you put in there. And just to make sure that it meets accessibility standards. So these things that we're sharing will help you put that content together just a little better. All right, now I'm gonna go back to sharing my screen. And so welcome aboard, Greg and Morgan. So I have uh, basically, I'm going to work on a piece of content. So what I'm looking at right here is when I'm building content, either an item or a blank page or a module page or something like that, that I have an opportunity to just pour content into it. And, whoop, that's not what I want to do. And I have to, I have to one, kind of make it look nice, but I also have to make sure it's within accessibility guidelines so that students, all students, all the students in our class are able to access that information easily and correctly. And so we'll get into that. Um, so I, I started an item, Accessibility 2, because for today's class, and I'm just gonna edit that content. When you copy and paste content from say Black, or uh, from Microsoft Word, say that you find some content in Microsoft Word, it brings in a lot of behind the scenes code and it may look nice and you're looking at it and saying, oh, that is, that is exactly what I want, but it may not be correct in terms of accessibility. So I have a page, this is my notes for the day. I went in and mocked up some text. And so I have this bunch of text that I can now paste into this site. And it looks like everything is the way that I want it. And, and honestly, it probably is. Um, but behind the scenes, it may be that it was marked up incorrectly. And so I wanna make sure that it's marked up correctly. So one way to do that is you can click on this HTML tag and I'll show you all this ugly behind the scenes code which may or may not make the text look correct, correct when you do it. And so it's going in and, and it's identifying, you know, it's adding all this code and, and adding, you know, what the font is, what the sizes are, but it may not be necessarily in line with, you know, for a screen reader or something like that. <clears throat> so one of the things that you can do is you can, when you paste something in, there's different ways to do it. So let me, let me get rid of all this. Your keyboard shortcut is control shift V and that will paste it as plain text. That's not always the best option. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. Um, and, and you can certainly try it. Control Z will uh, undo what you did. 
But there is another tool that I use very often. And it's called uh, Notepad++, or you may have Notepad as part of your, uh, your Windows. And so it's a matter of just pasting the text in there. And now it's laid out like I want it. It doesn't, it stripped all the formatting from behind it. And now I have to go back and add that particular formatting. But by starting out with a clean set of text, I have a better chance of doing that. So I can copy this in. And let me just get rid of that and paste it in and it stripped it all out. So um, that didn't necessarily work the way I wanted it either. Let me try it one more time. So, nope, okay. So that, that in fact stripped everything out and not the way I want it. So there's one other option that, that you can use. And that's, this is really primarily if you're taking text from another document, is to highlight all your text, start with what you have, And on the menu bar, up in the far right corner, there is Remove Formatting. And if you select that, it will take out all, a lot of the behind the scenes uh, code that was in there. And therefore, it's a lot cleaner than it was. And that, therefore, that's a good place to start. So, at the end of the day, you know, there's different ways, but I would start with as as pristine text as you can without a lot of the formatting ahead of time. Um, and that'll just kind of uh, keep things as simple and then go into actually here to do your markup. So one of the one of the places to mark up, let me get back to my notes here, is the idea of headings. So you want to break up your text as much as possible and headings are a way to do that. So you would highlight your line of text or just in that particular line of text, uh, you could go and on the, the menu bar, you have an option for format and you can drop down and you have a heading that I can select, you have, uh, and then you have subheading, subheading one and then subheading two. And screen readers will pick this up. They will identify where the heading is. And, and why this is important is if somebody is using a screen reader and you have a very long document, this helps with the navigation. It's just like, when we're going through a document, we go through and, you know, we're looking for different parts of the document that we want to go to and focus on. If you did not do that correctly, if you did not use a heading, then the individual would have to read every single word in the document to get to the right place. And this is, this is creating an impediment to you know, to helping them learn. So use the heading. So, you know, in the second set, I have a header two. I can change that to subhead one. And you just kind of walk through your document and you identify the things and how you want them to, to specifically look. So those are headings. And I recommend that you use headings throughout your document. Make, you know, make the headings, uh, you know, just kind of like if you were working on a, a journal article, you know, something that, that it grabs the attention, but is very descriptive of what's coming next and use those particular headings. Um, a way that you, you don't want to do it is you don't want to just highlight the text and 
you know, hit bold and increase the size to 24 points, things like that. You don't want to do that because that, in fact, is not using the tool correctly and identifying a header. All this is is text that has been manipulated. Um, and a screen reader will not recognize that as a header. Somebody who is who can see, you know, they may not notice the difference, but somebody who is using a screen reader definitely will. Clear as mud? If you have questions, throw them in the chat, jump up, um, you know, come up on the screen or whatever. That, that'd work for me, or uh, unmute. Okay, moving on. The next thing is dealing with fonts and style, you know, fonts and styles. Uh, bolding, bolding's fine. You could go ahead and, and, you know, bold different parts of your document that you want to bring emphasis to. That is absolutely great. You can also use italics uh, to bring emphasis to a, a part of a document. The one I would stay away from is underline. And the reason for that is because of our use to our, you know, being on a web browser and going through all these different web pages, we have become conditioned to the fact that underline means there's a link. Okay. And the fact that there's a link there and somebody will start clicking on it and it doesn't go anywhere. So this part of the document, and I do in fact have some links down lower, they look the same, right? This happens to be a link, but this one is not a link. And so that can add confusion to somebody who is visually they can visually see the document that they're going through and, and seeing that. For somebody who is using a screen reader, they won't even notice the, you know, they may get a warning or an indication that there's an underline there, but that won't, that won't be the same as a link. So please stay away from using underlines. Another area, uh, for bullets. So I see this often that we're going to bullet this list and somebody will come in and they'll type one, you know, and they'll type two and they'll type three and they'll consider that a bulleted list. When in fact, uh, for a screen reader, that is not a bulleted list. So instead, Select the lines that you want to have um, numbered and use the tool for a numbered list and you can then have those items numbered. Once again, it's the more correct way to do it. Uh, number, you know, numbered list and bulleted list are great ways to break up information uh, for your particular session, you know, for your, for your content to kind of space things out and that you want to you want to use that as much as possible if you wanted this to be abc instead there is a drop down next to the the list and i can make this lower alpha or i can use roman uh upper roman so i i can change how i want to to do it, but specifically, you know, normally a numbered list. Bulleted He's lists work the same way, that you can highlight a selection of text, go up and select bullets, and it will automatically make them bullets. So do not try to mark them up, you know, uh, on your own. Try to use the, the format that you have. If you're not necessarily happy uh, a more advanced feature is you can click on the CSS link and it's basically cascading the style sheet and it will allow you to manipulate like your lists 
that how you want that that image and you know the information that you want or or if you want a certain certain symbol to be used but I caution against messing in here uh, you can do a lot of damage and if I didn't know you were messing in there it would take me a little longer to figure it out so hey Stan hey Tim um, are these features so people who use uh, Google Docs are the features kind of the same as yep. far as changing things for accessibility? Yes. If you were to work in Google Docs, the same, the exact same things. If you're working in Word, exactly the same things. Okay. So when you're marking up your documents, this is the more correct way to do it, is to use headers, use lists, you know, use the tools for those specific functions to do that. Got it. Yeah, Thank absolutely. You. Thank you. Um, and yeah, and I think next week I'm talking about like Microsoft Word and, you know, doing the kind of the same things, talking about the same features. And yeah, there, there's a lot of, uh, I see a lot of things with documents that I receive is like, wow, uh, instead of using a page break on a Word document, they hit enter about 18 times to get to the next page. and you know, there's, there's tools that actually make, make it easier. So, and okay. Um, hyperlinks. So <clears throat> if I was to put a link at the end of these called read more, and this was going to link out to, you know, something, something clever, uh, let me go ahead and create a link and and open in a new window and insert. All right, so I have created a link and I want, in fact, folks to read more on all these different items. When a screen reader is coming, you know, when you're looking at a screen reader, you have an option to identify what links you want to go to. And when the screen reader looks at this particular page, it's going to go read more, read more, read more, right? And they have no idea where it's going to. So if you wanted to, you can, you know, cha change this particular link to, um, so library guide on, I don't know, 1865 history. And I can then make that a link. So when they got to that particular link, they would get to a link that would say library guide on 1865 history, right? That makes a whole lot more sense than read more. Or if I, let me just grab a link. And I'm, I'm kind of guilty of this too. So these are habits that I'm trying to break if I decide that I want to have that link in there, when a screen reader reads that, that's what it's reading. It's, you know, HTTPS, docs, Google, dot com, document, D, 10, L, you know, that means nothing to them, to somebody who is using a screen reader. So it would be better to use that, um, where I would 
call it my summer 2020 learning initiatives. And create a specific link for that. Instead of just dropping a hyperlink in there. So spelling counts, I guess. So, um, and so that way when the screen reader came to that, but that's also useful to me, you know, as somebody who's reading through the document, I know what I'm expecting to go to. So having those descriptive names as part of your, as part of your, uh, your links. So I'd encourage you to go back through, you know, your different documents. If you just got hyperlinks, see if you can, you know, get something that's a little more descriptive. If you just have something as click here or read more, um, you can improve upon that. So, you know, you could just highlight a portion of the document, and I know this means absolutely nothing, but I could turn that into a link, you know, that's very descriptive in where I want them to go or, you know, what they need to do. So, yeah, clear as mud. Okay, I see heads nodding. Okay. Yep. High contrast. So when we talk about high contrast, your best bet is black and white. That is the, the highest contrast that we can get to. So ideally keep things black and white. Um, if not, Ally will let you know. And so you have the ability to change the color of the text. And if I put something like this, that is hard for probably even you guys to read um, on the screen. And so try to avoid that. Now you may want to have a darker color, you know, that maybe I can get away with uh, a dark green or dark blue or something like that and, you know, use it to jazz it up. But, you know, if you start getting any lighter, uh, it becomes harder for those folks that have challenges with vision. The other thing that's important is 12%, I want to say 12% of males are colorblind. So if you identify something, you know, click on the green, or click on the red, um, and they're colorblind, they may have no idea what you're talking about. And so definitely try to, to stay away from that. Now, the best thing to do is, you know, use pieces uh, you know, of text that, you know, verbally indicates this is red, this is green, or, you know, click on the item with the stop sign, click on the item with the, the go green arrow, um, as long as you're not, you know, using blue arrows and red arrows and all those things, you know, that making sure that you, you keep your symbols distinct in things that you want to do to grab attention. And I would encourage, you know, having those type of um, little symbols in there to bring attention to different things uh, in your document. So. So color should not be the sole means for differentiating in your document. So, yeah. Okay. Adding images. So I decide that here, I want to go ahead and place an image. So I can go ahead and select an image. And I will browse my computer. All right, so I decide that I want to use this particular image. <clears throat> and it brings the image in. So 
one of the things that you should definitely be doing is adding an image description. What is the image? So, um, so image of a heat map. of a Wikipedia page. And at that point I can insert that. So now I have this image. If uh, somebody was going through this particular document, they come to this image, their screen reader would tell them that there's an image of a heat map of Wikipedia page, okay? And so it's, it's behind the scenes but it's important. So if you're running Ally and it's telling you that you need a description for your images, this is what it's talking about. So <clears throat> in order to, um, say, say that you need to fix a page, that you have an image there, and that doesn't mean get rid of the image, that means you know, let's go put a description in that you can right click on the image and select image and it'll bring that page back up and then just go ahead and put a description in there, uh, you know, that makes it appropriate. There are some cases that, um, that the image has words on it that are meaningful. So I had one that said, you know, Creative Commons uh, on it. And I can just use that phrase. So if you're, if you're providing instructions in an image, you need to have those instructions as part of the description for your image. Let me see if I can find one real quick. Um, we'll add another image down here. So in this case, uh, we're jazzing it up um, with this unit 4.1, arguing about literature. So I would very simply just put unit 4.1, arguing about literature, and insert. And that would be the description behind that particular image. Okay. Stan, can I ask a quick question? No, I, yes, I mean, yes, yes. Um, so when the, the, the images though, as long as they are titled, are we to assume though that a student has the technology to actually see what that image is or could? So if I have a graph, for example, my graphic is very content heavy, with something the student needs to learn, it's a table, it's a something. I mean, I would title what it is, but is the assumption that the student still would have the ability to see that? Or are we titling it because they might not and they need to know what they're missing? I guess I'm... Right. Um, yeah, just, you know, if that, um, for something that's very complex, you know, there's uh, the way that you're supposed to lay it out is you'll have your title, you'll have a description, then you'll have your image, okay? Um, you could, as part of the image, as long as that description was uh, very descriptive of what you're displaying, right, that, that somebody who was visually impaired would not miss out on something, then you can just very simply say uh, the, you know, the description above explains this image, okay? But if you, if there's information that's being conveyed in that image that is not 
you know, being explained in your description, you know, that everyone can see, then you need to, to add that additional piece, right? Otherwise you're denying them, you know, the full learning experience. I get that, but I guess I'm just, con I'm, I'm thinking to myself, like when I, when I use charts and graphs and images, it's because I feel like I cannot <laughs> just write a synopsis of this. That's why I'm using the graphic. And so I guess I want to have a better picture of how. Um, right. So, you know, basically you could show, you know, that uh, mortality rate in the United States is on a decline. You know, for example, from 1880 or 1980 to uh, 2020, right? And, and that's what, how you would describe that. If it's something that you can show trending, boom, boom, boom. You know, that would help somebody who was uh, visually impaired, so. If you have uh, specific use cases, come visit me and we'll explore them, you know, and just see, see if, every, if we got all the right pieces. You know, the, the idea is that we try to get closer to right and um, not deny somebody who has a, a disability of the ability to, to see something, you know, that, that we're denying them part of a class that other people are benefiting from. And that's, that's the whole idea. So um, I, I totally get it. And, you know, like I said, you know, this particular image, somebody who is, is visually, you know, they can see is definitely going to benefit from this um you know my little description was this is an image of a heat map you know how do i ex you know how do i explain a heat map to somebody that can't see right you know i can i could further add to say um you know that this uh identified areas on the web page that uh individuals look at first you know and it's represented in color for somebody that's visually impaired that can't see color, can't see, that's meaningless, you know? The, I mean, the whole thing, but at least they know what somebody else is benefiting from. All right, so let me, let me we'll come, probably come back to this, or maybe not. So <clears throat> when you add images for Blackboard, that is another content option that you have. So when you're building content, you can add an image. So this is, uh, say, my heat map. And I would browse my computer for that particular image. And so alternative text is for the image and you can also put a longer description. So, and the longer description would show up um, with the image itself where everybody can see it. The alter alternative text is for somebody um, who is using a screen reader. So, and so, let me grab my long text here. So I'll pop that long text in and I'm good with it. So way at the bottom, I have this, uh, you know, this image that's here. Somebody who would be navigating through this site will see the title, my heat map. Then the next thing they get to is the image. And as you can see, when I mouse over it, it says an image of a heat map. That is something that somebody with a screen reader would, would pick up on. And then I can have this, you know, more lengthy text if I wanted to uh, do it this particular way. Okay. So, you know, for those complex images, you just may need bulkier piece of text, you know, for something that, you know, you're spicing things up, maybe not necessarily. 
Uh, descriptive names. So even in, you know, even in Blackboard, you know, week one material or content one, uh, new documents, those are not necessarily descriptive names. Um, and, and probably there, you know, it could be a little better. So instead of, you know, my document, it could be something that's closer to this. So if I edit this, instead of just saying my new document, maybe this is assignment two, case study on accessibility for once again, somebody who is, um, you know, needs that extra assistance that will help get to the right place. And actually it's, it's probably useful for everybody that, you know, that becomes a little more descriptive. Assignment two, case study and accessibility um, is, is more, certainly more descriptive than test folder, you know. Uh, so, and that certainly is a lot better than just click here or read more or something to that nature. All right, let's go back to our previous document here. Just going to clean up and get rid of some stuff. So if you're using a, a table to lay out your document, I would recommend that you don't, right? Just have a linear format, just have them run it. I, I know it's like, well, that looks better. Uh, but if it's just for layout purposes, don't. If you're presenting information and, um, you know, a table becomes important, you know, that you need those columns, rows and columns, then absolutely uh, do that. So to insert a table, we have the little tool here. And I can indicate how many columns and rows. We'll give it about four rows and three columns. And I can make other adjustments and alignments. And the uh, advanced doesn't nor normally help me. So I put that in and uh, so that's column one, whoops. Column one, two, three, and you know, I can pop data into all of that. <clears throat> For somebody who, you know, according to the ADA recommendations, that you need to define a header row, that columns need headers. And if you're using uh, something that uh, identifies the rows, then certainly you would want to mark that up. Unfortunately, in Blackboard, it doesn't do that very nicely. It doesn't allow us to create a specific header row. You actually have to go into the code to do that. And so I'll show you, I'll try to show you real quick. This is the code right here for, for a table. And what you can do is uh, for, for the header is change this first set from TD to TH. And now that makes it a header row, which in a, uh, with a screen reader, will identify and, and point those things out. Like I said, it doesn't do it very well. There's other tools out there. Um,
There's an accessible table generator. That will help do that. So, Jeff, Jeffrey. Yes, sir. You unmuted, so. Did I? Yeah. Sorry. No, I did. must have been a mistake. All right. I'll let you go. <laughs> Actually, I didn't know I was muted. Well, then you were, you were awful quiet, so. Yes. <laughs> So there's, uh, there's different tools out there to generate a table that you can have it all ready to go, copy the code in and put it into your, um, your Blackboard site. Um, check them out, play with them. There's, there's different ones if you use tables a lot. Um, ideally, as uh, Jeff Davis mentioned, that we're just gonna make things boring. And uh, there's a lot of truth to that. <laughs> so. Let's see, uh, audio clips. So if you put an audio clip, you know, you upload an audio clip or you're, you're linking to it, Christine, you can uh, also include a, a transcription. Yes, Jeff. Yeah, so just to go back to that whole table thing. So um, I've been going through my courses and I don't, I use tables and I've gotten, got, I've gotten rid of all of them. What was the kind of interesting was, you know, the administration makes us include the master course syllabus now and have it available in Blackboard for all the students. So I went in and I ran the, you know, the checker here, like you told us, showed us how to do last week. And it flagged that thing. And I went back and looked at it as a table in it, but we can't change it. So now we've, you know, now, you know, I want this like perfect course and I can't even change the stupid thing, you know, so. Well, administration's probably going to have to go back and change all those master course syllabus to get rid of these tables if they want to do that. You know? Well, you know, all... feel free to name drop and you can send it right back and say, hey, can I get an accessible one? Um, this doesn't meet DAD or ADA accessibility yeah. standards and yeah. Yeah, that'll give them something to do. Yeah, it was kind of, it was just kind of humorous that, you know, here we are, we're, you know, trying to, as, as the faculty trying to be, you know, really compliant that they have all these documents from the, the administration that you sure. know, don't, don't meet the standard. So, yeah. Well, it was, it was interesting uh, working on the EIT committee. So electronic information technology, anyways, it deals with accessibility and what our guidelines are. And so they sent us a report format that we had to use to do this and it didn't meet accessibility standards. So, you know, <laughs> so, you know, the idea is that we try to get this closer to right. And so um, audio clips, if you are including audio for, you know, it's an important piece of your course, you need to have a transcription along with the audio clip. If you are including video that you need to have closed caption for your video or uh, it needs to be, uh, you need to have a transcript. So if, for example, if you get a video from someone else and the closed captioning is just horrible, you actually need to have a transcript um, for that. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of the key pieces. The, the last thing that I wanted to show was talking about uh, creating quizzes or tests that at times you need to provide um, somebody with an accommodation they need extra time for the test and so uh, you can do that if if you have a test that's open book get it to me in two days uh, probably not but if you have something that you know everyone is doing it in 30 minutes this individual needs 45 then you would need to make this a, this accommodation, but um, <clears throat> move my stuff for a little bit. So when um, creating, basically creating anything, especially for you know for online, just try to make the instructions as clear and detailed you know as possible to reduce those you know, questions that people have simply because you're not there, okay? Um, 
when you are, if you're giving an exam, you know, to give notice of the exam, uh, if there's going to be any time, you know, constraints to that, give enough advance notice to students. So if they have a need to make an accommodation that they can request it uh, ahead of time. And, you know, that way you can work it into when you uh, build your test. And then seek out, um, you know, just make kind of make sure it's accessible using the, the things that we talked about today. But let me, let me share my screen. We'll see if we can build a test. And let me see if I have tests in here. All right, so I do have some tests. So I will go to my content and go to assessments and create a test. And these are ones that I can do. So I'm gonna select one. I would create the, you know, the instructions as I need to, need it um you know show descriptions and and instructions to students at a time make it available there are if i wanted multiple attempts and so here is this test availability ex exceptions and this is where you would go pop somebody in so i would add a user And for example, I have this particular user, um, my, my test student one, and submit. And so now this student will get, you know, a single attempt like everyone else. I can create a availability. So I would put the date and times when that period would be open. So if I have, you know, they're only taking it for a specific um, period of time. I may have that restricted. They start at one o'clock, they finish at 1.30. Here I could say, extend this until, you know, 45 minutes or whatever. And you would put that information in. So, so say the 24th at, uh, let's make them do it at 1 a.m. Uh, no and uh, say the 24th and finish this at uh, 1.30, 45 and save. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. What do you mean it's not valid? There we go. And so now this uh, individual would have, you know, additional time that they can take the test. Another, another option to this is you may, and um, I'll go ahead and submit that. Another option is that you may have a group of students that you need to give accommodations to. So you could set it up individually for each student, one at a time. Or what you could do is you can create a group from your students. And This is going to be a manual enroll, so a single group. Call it my test group. And really important here is right now it says a group is visible to students. Say no. Right? You don't necessarily want them to know who else in the class has accommodations. So say no to that and add users. 
so I can add different people. So I'm going to add these two. And submit. And so when I go ahead and uh, create another test, instead of looking for individuals, I can just look for a group. So I can add a particular group. And here is my test group. And so now I can go through the same process of setting a time for those individuals. Okay, and then they are allowed to have extended time. Questions? Stan, can you remind me if there's a service or a, like a program that does the transcript for us? There is, um, there's one I use, it's, it's called Go Transcript. There's, um, So this is a, a service that I use all the time. I should get stock in it. Um, I think Rev, Rev is another one. Um, Rev is another one that I hear being used quite often. And so I'll put that one in there too. So Thank you. those are the two services that I use. Um, yeah. So I'm, I, I could do this by hand and it just takes a long time, but you know, so I, I hand it off to somebody, I pay for it. So I wish we had uh, the monies available, but, uh, Apparently, we're not moving that direction right now. So, so, any other questions? Any, any of that? Totally confused, everybody. No. Okay. Good. Tim. I was just going to say thanks. Thanks, Dan. You're Good welcome. To see everyone. Yeah, nice, nice group today. So, well, if there's nothing else, uh, next week we're having two different sessions. So, come on back. So, it'll be on the schedule. If you want to, uh, I sent a Stand link out with everything. This, Catherine. This probably. I did not catch any of that. Okay, try again. Sorry, my internet is unstable. I can ask you later. It's It was just about tables because I use them constantly. And so I apparently need to get rid of them. And I just want to make sure oh, that you're not okay. just talking about It depends on how tables. you're using the tables. So I, I, would, okay. I would connect with me first before you do a major overhaul. So... Let's let's chat okay. first, and there may okay. be some. I don't use easy. them in Blackboard so much, but in Word. Oh, Word! Uh, Word is we can do. A, Word's a little easier to work with, so I can. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, I'll get in touch with you about that. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Anything else, folks? I have a question, Stan. Yes, sir. Yeah, it has to do with actually uh, your. You, had, you did a, uh, a session yesterday on teaching with Zoom. Yeah. And I, I missed it. I had other obligations than Mark State College. Is there a recording of that somewhere? Yes. I, I sent out an email first thing this morning with a link to all that stuff. You didn't get I didn't it. see it. I didn't think I got it. All right. Let me, let me grab that info. 
Uh, all faculty, Zoom basics. No, that was, missed the session. That was it, missed the session at 7.40 this morning. So um, all, the, all the sessions to include this one will end up at this link. Okay, wonderful, thank you. You're welcome. So, all right, folks. I will not keep you. So enjoy the rest of your afternoon. It's hot and humid here. And uh, thank you for coming to visit. So. I see that Corey is here. Can I say something to her, please? Uh, you 